This is Latin Apps and Snacks Part 4. In celebration of Cinco de Mayo, we're going to be making everyone's favorite snack, nachos. But not just any ordinary nachos, chorizo and Mexican street corn nachos. Come on, let's get started. You're about to have a little taste of what you're missing. But if you cannot stand the heat, get out the kitchen. Full of flavor, flavorful, save your tools. Te vamos a enseñar una receta del baúl. Slice, dice, chop, nice spice, hot or mild. We got it, you just named the style. One in a meal, culinary skills, prestigioso. Todo queda sabroso. Who doesn't love nachos? Today we're going to be combining three different ingredients that shine on their own, but together, magic. Tortilla chips, chorizo, Mexican street corn. What's not to like about it? So the first thing we're gonna do is prepare our Mexican street corn. What is Mexican street corn anyway? Basically it's corn that's uh, either grilled or roasted or even boiled, and it's slathered in mayo and covered in cotija cheese, sprinkled with lime juice. And so today I'm going to be using fresh corn on the cob, and we're going to roast it, right, in those street corn flavors with the mayo and the cotija cheese and the lime juice, and we're going to roast it so that all those flavors just bake into that corn, and then we're gonna cut it off the cob, and we're going to add it to our nachos. The tip I wanna share with you today is how to peel the corn. Traditionally, you would take the corn, you would just peel it down, right? That's the old traditional method, and it's great. I do it all the time. However, sometimes it leaves these little strands of the corn, of the husk, right? And sometimes that can get in your teeth, and just people don't like that particularly. And so I'm gonna show you a way where you can peel the corn, not have any of those strings um, in that corn. I'm removing some of the outer leaves and trimming the top. Feel with your finger where the bottom of the corn is and cut half inch above that to expose the corn. Place in a pot of boiling hot water. Let's prepare the chorizo by first removing the casing. The way to do that is by running a sharp knife across the chorizo and then peeling it back like a banana. Then I'm going to slice into one inch pieces so I can break it up better in the pan and I'll show you a cheap way to do that. Why didn't I get a bigger bowl? Now we're going to add some vegetables to cook with the chorizo. By the way, let me know in the comment if you want me to do an instructional video on knife cuts. It's really a time saver in the kitchen. Do the same with a quarter each of green and red bell pepper. Let's cook the chorizo. So usually I like using ground chorizo because it's much easier to break into smaller pieces. But if you're using the chorizo links, uh, it could be a little bit harder to do that. So I like to use little tools. Like this is a pastry cutter, um, which is usually used for pastry cutting. But today I use it to kind of chop up that chorizo. So use what you have on hand. Uh, you'll be surprised what some of your basic uh, kitchen tools can do other than what, what it was designed for. And as you can see, I uh, made pretty good use of that. Our corn has been cooking for 10 minutes, which has helped to loosen the husk, and now I can just squeeze the corn out and all those strands stay in the husk. Perfect. Mm -hmm. 
Roll a lime to release the juice and squeeze onto the corn. We're going to slather mayo all over the corn. I'm using a Japanese mayo called QP. I'll post a link in the description. The mayo will help the cheese to adhere to the corn. Now roll the corn in the cotija cheese, which is a salty and crumbly Mexican cheese, making sure to cover all areas of the corn. Place on a piece of aluminum foil and drizzle with olive oil. Lastly, we're going to sprinkle some tahini, which is not only delicious on street corn, but on fruit as well. Roll the aluminum foil to enclose the corn, twisting the ends to secure. Place on a sheet tray and roast in a preheated 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. Once the corn is out of the oven, unwrap it and place it on a damp paper towel or kitchen towel. This will help to catch the corn from falling all over the place. Cut down the sides of the corn to remove the kernels. You can use the strip cobs and the ends from earlier to make a good corn stock for soup or chowder. Place the corn in a bowl and set aside. When it comes to the actual tortilla chips, use what you have on hand. If you have tortilla chips in a bag, use those. If you have flour tortillas or corn tortillas that you can cut up into triangles and fry them off or bake them off, then do that. Use what you have on hand. A lot of times we go out and we buy these, all these different ingredients when we could just use what we have in our fridge or in our pantries. I'm using corn tortillas because I had them on hand. I cut them in half and then into quarters. This is about 15 tortillas in total. Fry in oil that has been preheated to 375 degrees until golden and crispy, about a minute. Drain on paper towels and season. I'm using a mixture of salt, pepper, garlic, and cumin. So now it's time to make our nachos. The same pan that I cooked the chorizo in, I'm going to use as my serving vessel because it has all that flavor inside that pan. Place half the tortilla chips in the pan, spreading them out across the bottom of the pan. I like refried beans in my nachos. I place it in a pastry bag so I can lay it out more evenly. Now take half of the chorizo mixture and evenly spoon it over the tortilla chips. Do the same with half of the Mexican street corn niblets. Top it off with some more cotija cheese and shredded cheese. I'm using Monterey Jack and cheddar. Repeat the process for the second layer. Place the entire pan in a 400 degree oven and bake for 10 minutes or until the cheese is melted. We're not done yet. Garnish your nachos with a salsa of your choice. I'm using a charred tomato salsa. Check out the link above for the recipe. Drizzle with Mexican crema or sour cream. Dollop some fresh guacamole. Check out the link above for that recipe. Sprinkle with julienne scallions. And then last but not least, thinly sliced jalapeno peppers. Mm -hmm. 
Mmm, sabroso. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Thanks for watching. If you really like this video, smash that like button and click to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all new content. And remember, food can look good, but if it doesn't taste good, then your cooking is in vain. So make it sabroso.